right. <laughs> Welcome back. It's that time again that we get to talk about something to do with SGDs. But before we get there, very much as thanks you very much for that forex forex trading, you know, and uh, the conversation in there. It has been such an informative segment. And this morning, of course, I'm joined by a young lady. So uh, let me call her a young mother. She told me she's a mother. Yeah, and mom. she's a vet mom, you know, and she's a veteran in these things. And we get to talk about so much this morning and talk about the sustainable development goals. Do you know anything of that sort? Or oh, I'm not even going to get too much terminology and like, what is this? Anyway, join me in welcoming Nelly Gazares. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Wow, it's Thank nice to have you. Thank you. It was really nice for you guys to invite me and to give me this forum to speak mm -hmm. about what I love most. Yes. What do you love most? Sustainability, um, pro-sustainability from home, home level to mm -hmm. institution level. Mm -hmm. And I mean from product level to policies to create right. a framework within which the youth can start businesses around SDGs and green economy really. All right, and that's it. As she just mentioned, we get to talk about the opportunities that are there through the green economy this morning. And of course, she has narrowed down from the 17 SDGs. She has taken at least one to talk and get to sensitize young people about it and the opportunity therein. So we get into the conversation right away. So let's talk about Gezares. You are the founder of Green Things. Yes. What is these Green Things all about? Okay, so I'm going to take you slow, slowly slightly back mm -hmm. um my background is journalism i've All been right. a journalist for quite some time and at some point when i gave back to my first child my son i produced a tv show called green thing mm, that was, was in that the was year? around 2013. All right. yes so after producing the tv show i started looking for financing to do it and mm. that's when i realized that as a doctor you cannot treat yourself i could get <laughs> money for other people's production but not mine mm -hmm. Um, so it was not possible to run it. I went back into full employment. Then I went back to ZDF, German mm -hmm. TV, where I was a producer there, making stories, African stories for a German audience. And right. after some time, I moved out of there. For, for how long before you even progress? For how long were you there? I think about a year. Right. I was, I was there for about a year. Mm -hmm. And after that, I came out of it and started to, tr to try and make the TV show again. Right. Which again did not work. So I started a YouTube channel. I had to find an avenue to talk about how the environment is in a mess. Mm -hmm. But if we look at that and the disaster of climate change, if we look at that, it could actually be an opportunity. So then I started a, a YouTube channel mm -hmm. called Nelioteki, where I talk about any of the 17 goals. It could be about plastic recycling mm -hmm. to policies around... Um, uh, Good health. Yes, health mm -hmm. or again, plastic recycling, e-waste management. And it's a very small community of people who want to make a change you know, in the world. And because of that, I realized that not so many people want to talk about SDGs because it sounds mm -hmm. like such a big word for only people who have PhDs in whatever and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I thought the only way to explain how sustainability really is such a simple thing as fresh water, fresh clean water, access to clean toilets, access to decent jobs um, among the youth in Kenya mm -hmm. is to have things that we use every day to explain what SDGs are. And that's when I launched Green Thing Kenya. Mm -hmm. So Green Thing Kenya has really sustainable essentials for homes and institutions from a toothbrush to a reusable straw to um, a travel case for your toothbrush, a dish brush, a, a dish brush made of sisal and bamboo for doing right. dishes instead of, of um, foam, which is one of the most polluting plastic that we have around. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's how I started Green Thing. You, you have achieved so much. You have achieved so much with the way you have begun, you know, talking about your career. Then you are here talking about how you quit your career to venture into the, all these. My question is, what made you to quit your job just for this? I think the first thing that people ask me when I tell them I'm doing SDGs, they say, oh yeah, there's money in there. I'm thinking, no, there is no money in there. Mm -hmm. The largest population in Kenya is youth. It's not money? Are you sure you're not, not money? Not entirely, no. There is money in sustainability, right. yes, as I say. <laughs> because it's good to be clear about money. You know, money is still there. It is there. Uh -huh. It is there. And I'm going to get to that. Uh -huh. For anything to be sustainable, if you're talking about SDGs, mm -hmm. anything, any project or any business that you start there, is to think about, does that project influence 
um, make people's lives better, mm -hmm. like, uh, societal. Does that project make money? Does that project help the environment in one way or another? That for me is how, that's the formula to start a business around sustainability. Mm. Yeah. So for you, it's and all about you know, the impact of the society. It's the impact of the society, but also make money out of it. <laughs> yes. So it's not just a matter you know, of the impact. It no, has I, to earn you something. Yes, absolutely. And when I say it about money, it's because you think it's, there's a lot of financing globally in SDGs. There's mm. a lot of climate financing. And these are things you read mm. on paper, you see on news, but I honestly haven't been financed at all. Mm -hmm. To start a, a, a YouTube, um, to start a TV, a TV show on green economy at that time, they say there's no really revenue for that. So we are not going to pick up the show. Right. But if you decide I want to make a change mm -hmm. out of passion mm -hmm. and I'm going to clean the environment mm -hmm. while making money and making people's lives better, uh -huh. I think that's a good start. All right. You know, we, we even far much went ahead. Because someone probably could be thinking, what are these DGs? And yes. there are 17 of them. We may not even be able to mention all of them. Yeah. And uh, as you talk about the SGDs, SDGs, tell us, which one specifically have you, have you ventured into, specifically? Okay, so I ventured into the 12th SDG. Mm -hmm. It's called production, uh, Sustainable Production and Consumption Patterns. Right. Because we live in a society of take, make, throw. And that is such a linear economy, so to say. It's everything is is designated to go into the dump site. Let's talk about well, the people who are taking yogurt in the can there. Throw it out of the car. You know? Yeah. People who do that? Yeah. And they, say, they think it's okay. Literally. You buy water, you drink then. You I think throw sometimes they don't know better. Uh -huh. I, I've, I just, sometimes I've seen it and I've questioned people who do that and they're honestly shocked that you're asking. I mean, what did you expect me to do? <laughs> but um, when we talk about take, make, waste, it's. For example, a straw. We go to all sorts of events. Mm -hmm. um, we, our kids love using uh, a straw when they're taking their juices or yogurt. And they take a straw, they use it within 15, within maybe even five minutes, mm -hmm. and it's gone. A product taken from oil, all right. yeah, okay. a plastic is made from oil, mm. it lasts five minutes, and it stays on our environment for years and years, releasing microplastics mm -hmm. to the water. So you can also say that uh, I, I used clean water to water my vegetables. No, wow. it has microplastics. Which is now... That is now the cycle of the problem. Now the only way to solve that um, kind of problem mm -hmm. is to think of a circular way with an, with an alternative. Like people have wheat, you remember wheat? Mm -hmm. You know wheat? Yes, yes. There are people using uh, wheat straws internationally. There are people using pasta straws out of that. I have stainless steel straws. There are people doing bamboo straws. Mm -hmm. That is, it's, it's meant to last. And when a bamboo straw is done, you can put it in the soil and it will add nutrients to the soil. Uh, and I I've think seen for me that's that. a circle. Yeah. And I've seen you do that. Yeah. And it's quite amazing of what you're doing. And the, 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 the purpose and the passion of all these things, and even you quitting job as all along we had mentioned, why do you think, why do, where, where, where do you think the opportunities are for young people to venture into? There are 17 goals mm -hmm. right now, and there are 17 sustainable development goals. Um, think of a plastic right now that needs to be abolished. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about diapers. Kids use diapers every day, and they're really handy and they're really easy, but they will stay in the environment forever. It's a mess. And nobody wants a landfill next to the area they live in. Now, the solution is to have reusable diapers. That's one of the business opportunities somebody can venture into right reusable now. Reusable diapers? Yes. So How possible? Like uh, when we were kids, we used to have All napkins right. and then one out. Yes. <laughs> Those were back in the days, you know. Now there's a fancier way of doing that with less resources used. Which now we talk about being digital. Yes, and exactly. And diapers is part of it. Yes. That's, uh, that's one way you can look at it. Journalism, for example, which mm. is what I'm trained at, we need to have journalists specifically trained to do climate resilience journalists. Journalists doing stories on the potential mm -hmm. business opportunities that exist in sustainability. Mm -hmm. Of yeah. which now, we, last year Kenya hosted the, the, the one of the biggest conferences, the Blue Economy Conference, yes. yeah. which apparently, I don't know, are we as young people really aggressive in terms of those opportunities that are there? Yeah. Are we really aggressive, even to I notice them? 
Yeah, again, as I said, sustainability and SDGs has been given these big words, which I find unnecessary, honestly, and, and almost right. unfortunate, mm -hmm. that sustainability and SDGs look like a classist or elitist Just thing. For the if you Google climate change adaptation, the first thing you get is a document of, a P of somebody who has, I don't know, how many masters, how many PhDs, and you And there you why. are, like, I have a diploma. What yeah, is this now, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what I want to do is, I mean, we... Wangari Mathai is from this country. Mm -hmm. Why can't we start with that? Why can't we start, you know what? I'm going to follow what Ma Wangari Mathai did. I'm going to create an app to show which is the best tree species to plant what? where and make it a global um, app. That is one of the business opportunities in terms of sustainability that anybody, any geek, anybody in tech can do. All right. Yeah. You have done like almost more than 25 clips on your YouTube channel yep. and all these relate to your topic the green things why why not any other like the blue economy it's only the green yeah as you as you said before are the youth are we ready for the future and mm -hmm. I know we talk about the future but the future is now mm -hmm. when we had Millennium Development Goals um, how many years ago more than 10 years ago that was 2015 yes mm -hmm. We were talking about goals for the future. Now the future is here. We are still here. How are we going to feed ourselves? How are we right. going to have clean food? How are we going to have decent schools? How are we going to have roads? Because infrastructure is one of the backbones of, having, of achieving sustainability, really. And for me to talk about, and let's, let's, when we talk about green, it's not just the environment. Mm -hmm. It's... As I said, it's from um, this green education, this green clothing. Like now there's somebody doing um, conscious fashion. Her name mm -hmm. is Deepa Dosaja. Right. She's not using plastic. One of the biggest um, sources of microplastics is our clothing. Mm -hmm. She's not doing that. You know, how, how many animals in the world have been killed for their, for their skin? Quite um, a number? Yes, quite mm -hmm. a number. And that's one of the reasons why fashion is one of the most polluting and sustainable. Well, <laughs> and there are people creating businesses fashion out and of designers. that. designers? Yes, yes. What have Do you, you know how many them? liters of water are used to make denim that you're wearing? All right. Now, people are using very few resources, upcycling, making, hand drawing these patterns that you see on clothes so that we have less damage in our environment. And we, we have so many chemicals used mm -hmm. in manufacturing, really, in mm -hmm. Kenya. And some of these uh, chemicals release carcinogens. Cancer is on the rise. Mm -hmm. If we don't introduce SDGs as a thing, as a tool to have a cleaner and safer world that is just, then I think we have a bit of a problem. All right. Uh, and, and when you mentioned about that, I'm prepared to ask about, back in the days, you used to have, let me not call them permanent, permanent uh, staff, but at least they could be long-lasting. Unlike today, they are short-living short products that we are having in the market. Yeah. Why? Is this attributed to all this? We don't have, first, we don't have sustainable production and consumption patterns. Right. Um, like girls, uh, we have, this year we have doll shoes in fashion, as I was, as I was saying. Mm -hmm. Next year we have wages in fashion. Um, this month we have waterfalls in fashion. Sustainability of the market. No, it's fast fashion. All right. Come on, Marketing, come yeah, marketing is mm -hmm. tell us to consume, 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 consume. Um, while the people that are making all these fast products are probably kids who are under age, who are supposed to what? be in school, using the most polluting thing, things. Um, cotton, for example, that is grown conventionally, mm -hmm. has lots of chemicals. Long, long time ago, we used to have we used to have um, cotton that is grown organically, mm -hmm. not so much chemicals that were not that were used on the um, on the on the plants, mm -hmm. and some of which some of these chemicals are actually banned in Europe and being still still being sold in in Kenya and in most African states. Mm -hmm. So yes, when we look at that, we have because of marketing and fast fashion, we have very unsustainable production and consumption patterns mm -hmm. because we are told. No, you need, a, you, need, you need an iPhone 10, so I'm going to get an iPhone 10. No, you need an iPhone 11, so I'm going to get an iPhone 11. It's just consume, 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 There's just consume. too much of consumption yes. more than what we're yes. giving. Yes, and things are built in a way that you're going to need the next for sure. All right, there's a clip I'd like us to have a look. I don't know whether the clip is ready, so as we can just have a look at what you have been doing. I don't know whether my producer is ready with our clip, so as we can just take a look. Some of the things you have been doing, they're quite exemplary. Thank you. Looking at even the bamboo, you know, the bamboo brush. Yeah. And how you have reused that. Yeah. 
Thank All right, you. I'm told that it's not a trade. Let's let's continue. Yeah. Um, you your YouTube channel. Yes. As we began by saying, it has quite a number of them. Can you kindly give us? Can you kindly give us what's the title of the YouTube channel? So my YouTube channel is called Nelly Oteki, mm -hmm. and about that, I would like to say something. When you care, there's 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 a lot of influences in Kenya, mm -hmm. earning from um, YouTube, lots mm -hmm. and lots of them, mm -hmm. and most of them have more than ten thousand mm -hmm. followers. Oh. I mm -hmm. have a YouTube channel of I think three hundred people mm -hmm. who know what I'm about, who know where I'm going to be. And it's a very small community where we ask ourselves, why can I get an eco-friendly toothbrush? Why can, why can I get a reusable diaper in Africa? Something like that. And because of that, I've really made it, you know, as a young person, you have to be, you have to be um, very intentional about mm -hmm. what you are, especially as a content creator. My name is Nelly. I'm doing things to do with green, period, yeah, nothing yeah. else. So if there is somebody out there looking to make a video on um, sustainability in Africa, mm -hmm. they can consult you about that, even with your 300 subscribers. Once we're back from yeah. watching the clip, there's yeah. something I'd like you to mention about African sustainability yeah. and about, about the products and sustainability of its market, even yeah. in terms of the climate change and the like. Yeah. But before then, there's a clip, as you mentioned, about some of the things that you've been making. This is what attracted me to her page. Take a look. As the flower in an aesthetic organic shape like this in space with conscious thought it's a piece of uh, um, and to celebrate woman nature and everything this is not this is different this is a different yeah this is a, this is um an artist as i said i look for people do unique because of that um so here, for example, um, I'm using uh, this, uh, this uh, typical African mask called the uh, Songhe mask. It's come, Songhe, yeah, it's come from uh, Congo. And uh, I add this, uh, this raffia because, uh, yeah, during uh, centuries we use them uh, to make some dance with mask. I'm using organic uh, uh, materials uh, because it stimulates my uh, my creativity and uh, my imagination, actually, more than the other uh, other material. And uh, organic shapes are unpredictable and flowing. And porcupine uh, kills uh, with a, a symbol of uh, protection. I call that um, the fourth wife. Fourth wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this piece I call is unexpected. Bamboo toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I'm, I'm loving the way the way things are turning out to be, but because of time, you may not even be right. able to 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 uh, expand on every every picture and every image over there. Yeah. Let's talk about this green thing, the one that you're talking about. She's yeah. using these kind of stuff that you don't even want to think of, but it, she's getting good of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I can just pick, should I pick on the toothbrush? You can just use. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I pick on the toothbrush, um, we use a toothbrush every day. Mm -hmm. I don't know the current statistics because as I said, there's not much data produced in Kenya mm -hmm. about our production and consumption here. I don't know how many t toothbrushes a household uses per year, mm -hmm. but it's many. I'm going to speak for myself. Mm -hmm. I use a toothbrush every three months. Now, if I use a plastic a toothbrush every, that's about four, mm -hmm. and I have a family of four, how many toothbrushes are those going to wow. the landfill wow. to stay there wow. forever, mm -hmm. polluting the environment? I had to come up with a, with a solution. Mm -hmm. Now, the solution that I created is a bamboo toothbrush. Right. So I have bamboo toothbrushes that go between 250 shillings to 350 shillings, right. and you can have a pack mm -hmm. if a you pack, want. Wow. Um, there's one specifically I created for families mm -hmm. where you can get uh, five toothbrushes for 1,000 shillings. Now, if you use it, when you're done using a bamboo toothbrush, you just, again, put it in the soil and you're good to go. It's just it's a nutrient. nutrient. It's plant-based, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Um, wow, that's that's one of the opportunities I saw mm -hmm. in terms of uh, green Let's economy. talk about, you should say her name is? Her name is Maliza. Ma yes, Maliza. Yeah, Maliza, as I said, I do products um, mm -hmm. 
to talk about sustainability. I do right. videos mm -hmm. as a YouTuber, but I also do products, so toothbrushes and videos. Right. So like, okay, now it's gone again. So Is that's the toothbrush. Mm -hmm. That's the name of my company, Green, Green Thing. Now I was, I've made a video on how to remove the bristles mm -hmm. before you dispose it off. Mm -hmm. All right. To remove. Um, After you remove it, then from there you go and put it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because this is still nylon. Mm -hmm. That's the best, that's the most hygienic uh, product for making bristles in right. the market right now. Mm -hmm. Tried with coconut fiber, mm -hmm. but that just comes off. It's like having, you know, the mswaki, the, yes, the yes. stick that we used to cut. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty mess mm -hmm. to use that. So once you're done with that, you put the bristles in a plastic bottle or um, a plastic uh, container of, mm -hmm. of the same material. Mm -hmm. And then you can use it for making eco bricks. Right. I don't know if you know Eco Bricks. That's really. that's actually another business opportunity that mm -hmm. somebody can venture into, mm -hmm. because we have companies producing plastic, packaging their products in plastic, mm -hmm. but they don't give us an option on how we are going to handle that plastic. Mm -hmm. They don't give us um, easily accessible deposit points where we can go drop the plastic so they can take their mess their mess back. Mm. So one way to handle plastic is actually put lots of other plastic in it or soil mm -hmm. or stones and use it as a building material right. instead of bricks. Oh Nelly and soil. out of time. So I'd like yes. you to just give us your parting shot. I just don't want to do this camera. Tell us where we can find you on Facebook or yeah. Instagram any other social media page that you are in, yeah. of course, your parting shots. Yeah, okay. So it's beautiful that you want to find me, but what I want to tell you is climate change and SDGs is such a big and, and a very wide um, sector of the economy. You can, f you can start any business, really. And for Green Thing, I'm always up for any chat, really. You can buy a product or you can come talk about any business idea that you have and I can guide you through it. If you'd like to buy any of my products, I'm available on Instagram, Facebook as Green Thing Kenya, and I'm also on Facebook as Nelly Gesare Oteki. All right. Many thanks, Nelly, for coming along. It has been such a nice time even to tell Thank us about the so green much. economy, Thank you. which is really booming in the country and taking preeminence in it's the market. To. It's, it's supposed to. It's supposed to. It's supposed to. I just wish we had more people under 35 doing something about it because we, we've been talking. We've been talking. We can have all sorts of policies. We can have all sorts of conferences. Uh -huh. But if you're not thinking of getting the best um, bristles for toothbrushes coming from Kenya, yeah, we're going to talk so much. All right. Many thanks, Nelly. That's it from us and the green economy whole thing. And we appreciate, of course, for you to keep us company. My name is Karanja Alex. Of course, it's always a pleasure. Many thanks for keeping it. Y254. See you in just a few.